Hello, welcome, this is Jennifer, and I'm so glad you're here. Today I'm sharing with you one of my top five inking techniques. This is a technique that allows you to get the look of watercolor with very little effort. We will be creating our own watercolor ink pad, and we can do this with a variety of stamps. And the best part is, this is great for mass producing. So if you're someone who likes to make a bunch of the same cards for the holidays or similar cards, this is a great technique that will save you time. All right, so let's get started. I am using the new Concord and Ninth Simon Says Stamp Stamp Timber Collab Stamp Set. It's called Festive Flower. It's a large six by eight stamp set with beautiful floral images that are very easy to layer. This could be used for the holidays and non-holidays. There is a coordinating die set available. I'm not using it in today's video, but it is available and it's sold together or separately. This is a beautiful set and it's one of those that once it's sold out, it'll be gone for good and it probably will sell out very, very quickly. But keep in mind, mind today's technique could be done with a variety of stamps, anything from large and solid to small and detailed, and you'll get an idea of that as we go. The stamping we'll do today gives us a faux watercolor look, but keep in mind you could get a crisp layered look like the examples you see on the package if you just do regular stamping. But today we're creating our own watercolor ink pad. I'll be stamping our flower first. For this technique, you need a piece of clear acetate, some heavyweight packaging that you maybe you were gonna throw away or crafting acetate would work. I'm starting with a smaller piece here, but I'm gonna to switch to a bigger piece, which you'll see later, which I recommend doing. I then am taking two baby wipes and folding them in half and putting them on top of each other. I'll talk more about the baby wipes and other supplies as we go, but for now I have two folded and stacked together and I'm cutting part of it off. I only need that large square. I'll save the other pieces for something else. I'm placing that on the top center of my acetate piece. This will be my ink pad. I'm placing my acetate and baby wipe into my MISTI stamping tool. I'll talk about other ways you can do this later on. And I've positioned my stamp so that when I close it, it'll hit right onto that baby wipe, that folded piece of baby wipe. All right, now I'm pressing that stamp in there just so I can see an indentation of that shape so I know where to add my ink. It's hard to see in the video, but I can see it in real life. Now I'm going to add dye ink re-inkers onto the baby wipe. And you don't need a whole lot. The more you put down, the more intense the color will be. I am using Simon Says Stamp and Concord and Ninth re-inkers here, just choosing the colors that I like. Now I'm putting darker color towards the center and working my way out to lighter color. I will put a little bit of pink and a little bit of like a grapefruit color in there too, just for a bit of variation. Notice I am not putting care to make this look pretty. I'm just covering that area of that flower indentation that I made onto that baby wipe. Then I just give it a few spritzes with water just to add a little bit more moisture to it. Now I close the door to make sure that I have ink everywhere where that stamp will hit when I close the door on the stamping tool. Look like I need a little more so I added it in there. So this clear acetate piece and the baby wipe with the re-inker in it is our ink pad. So all I need to do is close the door on my MISTI stamping tool to press the stamp into the ink pad that inks up our stamp. Then I can pick up the ink pad and move it out and now stamp this onto cardstock. I'm using regular white cardstock. You could use watercolor paper if you intend to use more water, I'll talk more about that. Here the first image is usually not that great, but as you do your second and third, it just gets better and better. All right, so on top of that, I'm gonna do the same thing again, but this time after I ink up my stamp, I gave it one quick mist of water and then I stamp it down. By adding a little water onto your inked stamp before you stamp it, you get more of that watercolor look. So let's do that again. I'll put in another piece of cardstock, put my ink pad back in place. I didn't add any more re-inker, no more re-inker now. Press my stamp into it. Now open it up, remove our ink pad, and then I can either miss that if I want to, a quick mist, and then stamp it or just go stamp it directly. Now I usually like to do two impressions on one piece, just to get more color down. Now it looks like I used a lot of uh, re-inker on these baby wipes. 
but really a little reinker goes a long way. And I've never blown through a whole bottle of reinker reinking my ink pads. So this is a great way to put them to good use. Also, I can continue to use this DIY ink pad many, many times in this little crafty session. You'll see I make a bunch and I could keep on going. Now you could try to save it in a Ziploc bag for future and then just re-wet it maybe with some water. But I usually just make one of these little DIY uh, baby wipe ink pads and use it for a crafty session many times. So I would maybe use this 20 times at least and that way I get a good amount of images out of it. Now you may want more intense. If you do, you can go back and add some more reanchor in. Again, it looks like I'm using a ton, but you really don't need much. Now this technique works great with dye ink reanchors. That's what I'm using today from Simon Says Stamp and Concord and Knight. Uh, it also works great with distress ink reinkers. So try whatever reinkers you may have, and it might work for this technique. I know Gina Kay's inks work great too, any dye ink. Now here I am, I added some more darker color, cranberry I think it was, towards that center. So it has that those kind of lines in it. Really, you can get kind of fun with this and get kind of artsy. I'm not looking for a solid red image. I wanted a little bit of that pink, a little of the dark red, a little bit of that orangey color, just to give me that watercolor look. Now, if you were only doing one image, I wouldn't take the time to make your own ink pad like this. I would instead use markers and scribble color onto the stamp, spritz it with water and stamp to get that watercolor look. But this is a great technique when you're doing multiple images. You could even switch and grab another flower image and use the same ink pad. But when you wanna sit down and make a bunch, this is really fun to do. Each image will look a little different and each one will look like you hand painted them. I love the look of watercolor, but I am not good at it. I struggle big time with it. So this is a great way for me to get that look by using a stamp, reinkers, and a baby wipe. Okay, so I'm just continuing to make a bunch here and I can keep going making more and more and more. But I am gonna run out of time today. I have my parents coming over for dinner, so I gotta get this batch done and I can always come back and make more. In fact, I wanna use these same images with a blue. I think a blue flower would be, be beautiful. Doesn't have to be for a holiday card. Now here I'm lining up one of the inside images. And for this one, I created a mini ink pad with my leftover baby wipe. Remember how we cut some off? And onto that folded up baby wipe, I put some uh, Concord and Ninth Buttercup and then some Simon Says Stamp Caramel. And you can see there how you, I'm getting yellow and brown and it looks like it's swirled together. Watch when I stamp, it looks like it's swirled together. That is such a fun thing you can do with this DIY ink pad. You could make it all like a light color with swirls of darker color and it'll really stay put. And you can stamp that kind of swirly image over and over again. I'll do a variation of this technique in a later video, but today I just wanted to show you how you can quickly create a bunch of faux watercolor images. So I'm gonna continue and add this to the center of each flower. I'm not taking a lot of care here and I'm not gonna do the second layer for the inside of the flower and the, today's cards because I'm gonna actually glue some little embellishments in the center anyway. So at this point, we've stamped our flower and we're stamped the center. I'm gonna skip the second layer of the center and for now, I'm not doing the second layer of the big flower because I'm not sure I wanna do it. I end up coming back and doing it. You'll see later in the video. But for now, I'm gonna just set these aside and let them dry and I am hand cutting out one of them. I don't have the die, so I'm just fussy cutting. Only one for now. I'll use that single flower to help design the rest of my card. You'll see it's very helpful to have it cut out. Next, I want to create this white panel for our card front that has the green foliage stamped on it. We're gonna do the same technique for that, creating our own green ink pad. And we'll get a lot of use out of this ink pad, and you'll, you'll see in a moment. So I have another piece of white cardstock here, four and a quarter by five and a half inches. And I'm just laying my flower down along with some of the leaf images from that same stamp set, planning out where I want those images to be. So I have my cutout flower on top and I'm just tucking all of those clear stamps behind it. 
Notice some of the clear stamps are hanging off on the left-hand side of the cardstock. So I can't shove this in the bottom left corner of the Misty. So what I'm gonna do instead is I'm gonna leave all those stamps where they are. See how they're all up in the top left corner of the cardstock? Then I'll remove that flower and I'll rotate this cardstock so that that way the images are hanging off the bottom corner. So watch, I'll just rotate it here and I'll put it in the top left of the Misty. So now those images can hang off the edge with no problem. So each time, this time, I'll put my cardstock in that top corner. All right, now this is where I use a bigger piece of clear acetate. This is actually a backing from a six by eight stamp set. And that is actually better to use because it protects your paper better underneath. And I have two folded baby wipes there, just like we did before. And I have placed that where my leaf images will hit. I'm pressing those leaf images into the folded baby wipes. Hard to see the indentation in the video, but I can see it enough so I know where to put my re-anchor. All right, so I have my little uh, leaves pressed into that folded baby wipe, and now I'm adding re-anchor. I'm using a dark, darker color like um, that evergreen just in parts of it. Then I'm putting a slightly lighter parsley around that in some of the other spots. And then I will add some sprout. I'll add some sage. I recommend doing a variety color here. You don't want all the same green. You want some that look a little different. Even a pop of yellow or pop of blue in here would be beautiful because again, it adds to that kind of free watercolor feel. So I'm just squeezing some of this rinker down. Again, it looks like it's a lot, but it's really not that much. If you've ever used a reinker, you know not much comes out at once. So I'm really just kind of spreading it around with the nozzle. Once I thought I was done, I gave it a few spritzes of water, that our little ink pad, just to get that color to blend together. And I closed my stamp on it. And I realized that my stamps needed more ink in some areas. They, um, some of the stamp images weren't picking up color. So I had to squeeze a little more down. Now we can start working. So I pressed my stamp into my DIY ink pad, removed our ink pad, and stamped it onto the white cardstock. Then I'll repeat the process pick up more ink. You can give it a spritz with water if you want to or skip. Look at that. Look how detailed it still is, but it has that watercolor feel. It's so cool. So I'm going to keep doing this. You can see it's really easy to pick up that big piece of acetate with the baby wipe stuck to it so that you can take it in and out of your Misty stamping tool and continue to stamp on these panels. And again, I'm doing two stampings per cardstock panel. Now, if you do not have a Misty stamping tool, you could just lay your DIY ink pad on your desk, put your stamp on your acrylic block, and then just stamp your acrylic block into the ink pad and then onto your paper. Now, I chose to use white cardstock here today because I'm not using a whole lot of water. I'm only misting a little bit, so it's not really saturating our paper much. It dries very quickly. But if you want a more true watercolor uh, look, you can use watercolor paper and then spritz your stamp, your ink stamp, a little bit more with water and stamp that. And that'll give you more of a watercolor look. So this is kind of like a faux controlled watercolor and it is beautiful. Each image will look a little bit different and it is fun to do. And look, I can just keep going, continuing to ink up my stamp and stamp it on the cardstock many, many times in this little crafty session. All right, so let's look at what we've got so far. So I'm gonna rotate that around and there, let's see how my flower lines up. I'm loving it so far, but I did want a little more foliage. I I tend to go overboard. If you've watched my videos, you know that's what I do. So I'm gonna do another uh, round of stamping. Same ink pad that we just created, same images, just moving them. So I'm adding like a leaf, uh, two more of the little evergreen pieces, and making sure that those are sticking out in some of the empty areas around the flower. So I have those in position, and just because I have everything set up, I'm gonna rotate it again put it in the top left corner, and I'm gonna use the same ink pad. Now, our stamps are in a different spot, right? So I'm not sure that my stamps will hit the ink on the ink pad. You can see it misses a little bit. You can try moving it around on the acetate, rotate it and move it to make best use of your little DIY ink pad. 
but I decided to squeeze in some of the lighter greens for these foliage. So I used sprout and parsley mostly because I wanted these to be lighter. You can see there I get a lighter image. I did go back and put a little more parsley on there and then continued with the process. So I stamp into our ink pad, then onto our paper, then into our ink pad again, spritz it and onto our paper. And I'll continue to do that over and over again for all of the panels. So we have lots of leaves on each of these panels. Now I'm not gonna show all of that because it's the same process once again. Now I have all of these backgrounds with lots of leaves and we have our flowers. Now you could stop here. These definitely look beautiful. You could go with this, but I remembered that this Concord and Ninth stamp set has layering images. And I thought I would do more faux watercolor stamping with those layers on top of what we've already done. So I'm lining them up with the images we've done. You notice I have two of the same leaves there and I didn't wanna to have to do this process twice for that second layer. So I took one of the extra layering images from the stamp set. I'm just gonna make it work as a layering image for one of the leaves. So one of them isn't lined up correctly. It's not the right image to go there, but it's gonna work just fine because our flower will color, cover most of it. Again, my images are hanging off the edge, so I'm rotating it to go in that top left corner. I did decide to add, use one of the little evergreen images again, just so I have some on that edge of the card. Once again, I'm using that same DIY ink pad. It still has lots of ink in it. Moving it around on that acetate piece so I can get it to a position where our stamp will, stamps will stamp into the ink. Now, one of the advantages of using that big acetate piece is because uh, I can spritz onto the ink pad and not actually get my cardstock behind it wet. So that's an advantage of using that big acetate piece. All right, so now I'm doing my second layer here and notice how it looks like we have layers of watercolor now. We have our base watercolor leaf and then this extra layer, which just gives some more depth and dimension to it. So let's keep going. Stamp into the ink pad, stamp on our project. Stamp into our ink pad again, stamp onto our project after a quick mist. And there we're building up those layers. Again, that one leaf there that's on the bottom left of the screen, you can see the layering is not exactly right on it, but it doesn't matter because the red uh, flower that we put on top will cover all that up. So it looks a little silly there, but I promise in the end it'll look just fine. So this is a technique that you can do with really any images. We have the evergreen images, which are detailed and it's working great. We had that big flower, which is large and solid and it works great. And we're using layering stamps here and it works great. So this is one of those techniques that is great with a variety of stamps when you wanna do a bunch of panels at once or a bunch of stamped images at once. I have done a video on this technique and it shows a variety of different types of stamps used with this technique. I will link to it up here on the top right in my description below and at the end of this video. I really encourage you to check it out because it shows more ways of creating your own ink pad with different types of stamps. All right, so after I did all of my leaf panels, we have the two layers on those leaves. Let's go back to the flowers and add the second layer to the flowers. I didn't think I wanted to do it at first, but I'm glad I did it because it just adds more color and um, depth to our images. So I'm lining up that second layer of the flower, it lines up very easily. And then I will create a new ink pad with red ink because I threw away the one from before. I didn't think I was gonna use it anymore. I threw it away. And when I went in my trash can to try to save it to use here, I had coffee on it. So I'm starting that ink pad over. If you were doing this, these cards on your own, use the same red ink pad that you created before. I'm just starting over here. This time I'm using watermelon reinker from Simon Says Stamp. It's like a pinkish red, uh, darker pinkish red, and some cherry color here. I'm using darker color for this layer. If you were using the same ink pad from before, just add a little more dark reinker in it and you'd be good to go. So I'm doing the same thing, inking up my stamp, stamping it on, inking up my stamp, misting it and stamping it on and do this over and over on all the panels. You could get away with one 
impression on each cardstock panel if you use more color and maybe more water. But I um, am trying to, again, get a little bit of a controlled watercolor look, so I like to do the two impressions. I mentioned earlier, but I think it's worth saying again, I do encourage you to mix different types of reinkers together. I stayed pretty safe here with the reds and a little bit of pink and a little bit of orange, but I do encourage you like throw maybe some purple into this and it would give you a burgundy, throw some blue in it and it would just give you these little pops of color. You'd be surprised how well it will work. The moisture and the baby wipe blends it together and it's always lovely. The results are always lovely. So here we have our backgrounds, the foliage over on the left and all of our flowers over on the right. I'm going to go fussy cut a bunch of those flowers, as many as I have time to do before my parents show up, and then I will start putting these cards together. But before we do so, look at how different each of these panels look, how e each of these flowers are different, depending on if I stamped once or twice, depending on if I added water or if I didn't. I think they look hand painted. I think they looked like Christina Werner or Dawn from W Plus 9 did it. Not me, <laughs> because I'm not good at this stuff. They're pros at it. It stresses me out to do it on my own. So for me to be able to use stamps and supplies I have to get this look is just so exciting to me. All right, so now I'm gonna take our background panels and I'm cutting a half inch off the right just for the card design that I'm doing. So the nice thing is if you're doing a bunch of the same, you can hold two of them together and cut two of them at once. So this is me just mass producing some cards. All right, now I'm going to glue these onto a four and a quarter by five and a half inch white note card, and I'm putting it right onto the right hand edge. I'm using my glue press that has Gina K Connect liquid adhesive in it. And here's something that I've noticed when using this that I didn't mention in my video where I talk all about it. When I'm going to put glue on these back panels, notice I've squeezed the handle down and I haven't had to like pump it. I'm just holding it. You squeeze it and hold it squeezed and the glue will just keep coming out. So if you were wondering if the glue press was right for you, that's another thing to keep in mind. You squeeze the handle down and just hold it squeezed and the glue will just keep coming out. Uh, I really am happy with this tool, but I'm also happy with the fine tip applicator bottles that I've used many years. Uh, I will link to the video where I show both of them so you can decide if either of them would be right for you. Okay, while those panels dry, let's get our flower ready. I wanted to pop the flower up, but I usually pop things up by gluing additional die cuts behind it. But remember, I don't have the die for this flower. So instead, I die cut some circles that fit nicely behind it. The reason I did die cut circles is I was die cutting sentiments anyways, so I just die cut these circles from scrap cardstock. On the back of each flower, I glued three circles, three circle die cuts, and then I'll glue that on top of our card. You could definitely use foam squares here or foam circles or foam tape, but I find this will hold up better in the mail. And these are scraps that would have gone to waste. And it didn't take me any more time to die cut these circles because I was already die cutting my sentiments at the same time, which you'll see here in a moment. So those circle die cuts on the back are simply a way to add some dimension for those flowers. All right, next I thought I would add the look of splatter or spatter or little flecks on the background without actually doing so. I, again, like to have control over uh, how my project somewhat comes together. So I am stamping those little spots on the background. I'm using a Concord and Ninth stamp set. This image is meant for snow. You can see the stamp set it's from. It coordinates with this die set that is super cute. You can create these great scenes for a card. I'm using the snow stamp with gold metallic ink to stamp the look of little flecks in the background. It's a great way to get that look of splatter or spatter without having to worry about it landing anywhere you don't want it. And the best part is I don't have to wait for it to dry. I can keep moving on with the rest of the steps on the card. All right, next we need our sentiment. Now I mentioned I die cut sentiments and I die cut these at the same time I die cut those circles. I like to run multiple dies through my machine at once to save time. 
These are the Concord and Ninth Holiday Sayings die set. There's the words Deck the Halls, Ho Ho Ho, Joy, Very Merry, and Peace, and the Shadow Die. I just use the word dies themselves, and I cut them once from white cardstock, scrap white cardstock, and once from gold cardstock, and I glued those together for little dimension, and I'm adding them on the bottom right of our cards. And I'm using the peace, very merry, and joy sentiments, just so each card's a little bit different. I love the style of these bold sentiments from Concord and Ninth. If you've watched my videos, you know I've used their other bold dies many, many times, and I'm glad they added some holiday. Now, remember I have that little border over on the left-hand side of our card? I wanted to add a thin strip of gold cardstock and then colored cardstock next to that. Let's do the gold cardstock first. I have gold cardstock here and I'm cutting thin strips from it. I'm not measuring, just eyeballing it. Each of them's a little bit different, doesn't matter at all, but they're all very narrow. Then I'm running my liquid adhesive, the tip of my fine tip bottle here, right along the edge of our stamped panel. And then right into that glue, I am laying the gold cardstock stri strip that we cut. Really quick to just put a line of glue and then lay that uh, gold strip right up against the edge of our stamped panel. Doesn't take long at all. Once it's dry, I can trim off that excess hanging off the top and bottom. Now it looks like we matted that piece, but it's just a thin strip of gold cardstock, so we're not using much. Next, I'm using an older Hero Arts confetti circle die. I think it's discontinued, but it just cuts tiny little circle die cuts. There are a lot of dies out there that make little circle die cuts. I like to use these as accents. You could definitely use pearls or gems, but these are flat. And I just die cut from gold metallic cardstock, and they're great to glue a cluster of them at the center of this flower. So it adds that shine without the bulk. And also, it's a good way to save a little cash because I'm using paper for embellishments instead of actually buying gold gems or pearls. So look at your dies. A lot of dies or die sets have little circles or little dots that are great as accents. I'll save all of the extras here for a future project. All right, once I have the centers done, it's time to add that colorful strip down the side of the card. I couldn't decide if I liked red, green, or white, so I'm doing a few of each. I'm starting out with red cardstock here, and I'm cutting them to be about a half inch wide. I then will glue it right into that open space there, just press it right up against the gold strip we have down, and then give that some time to dry and trim off the excess. So on some of them, I put a red strip, on some of them, I put a green strip, and on some of them, I left it white. I couldn't decide which one I liked better. Would love to hear what you all think. I'm not sure, I think maybe the white. I don't know. Maybe the red. I don't know. I don't know. I'd love to hear what you think. When I can't decide and I'm making a bunch, I change up each. That's one great way to keep me from getting bored and making the same thing. I change up the sentiments or I change different accents on the card. So here are the cards I was able to do this afternoon, and I still have lots of flowers and foliage panels left over for future cards. I just didn't have time to cut them out and put them together today. Here you can see that faux watercolor look that we get by creating our own ink pad with re-inkers. And by the way, that trick of putting the color cardstock on the side, doesn't it look like this was a white panel that was glued to a red card? Well, really it's a white card base. White card stock is generally less expensive than colored. So this is a fun way to fake using colored card stock for a card base. All right, so there we have several cards using this fun Concord and Ninth stamp set. I still have lots of pieces left over to make more. And I could have kept going with those DIY ink pads. I really hope you will try this technique. It is so much fun to do and a great way to stretch your supplies. And it's a great way to get the look of hand-painted watercolor without much effort. I will have my supplies linked below in my YouTube description. And at the end here, I'll link to a couple other videos, including another where I do this technique, and I encourage you to check it out. Thanks for spending this time with me. I'll see you again very soon, and have a wonderful week.